forces lever now levers or fulcrum in this case right? now you may have seen that in your uh, science experiment to balance the meter wheel using a fulcrum right? so here we're going to analyze that uh, more mathematically <coughs> so let's look at this diagram here now we have two common uh, lever configurations which are shown uh, down here so let's assume that you have this uh, system here uh, with the pivot given by this fulcrum and then at the fulcrum there it will always produce a reaction force due to Newton uh, third law and then uh, there is a force here that we are going to apply uh, given as F and then we're going to put a lot a lot here that has a weight of W uh, this lot is uh, located about A distant from the pivot the total length of this uh, plank or lever is L okay by making assumptions that it is in equilibrium and therefore we can apply the uh, principle of moment now uh, identify how many forces involved here so they are basically <coughs> they are basically like uh, one force here we have another force here and so, right? okay. so two forces acting on the uh, uh, plank so I think in this case we sort of make an assumption the uh, the lever here is quite light it's quite light if it is not light then you might have to consider the weight the weight for the lever itself. so here we omit uh, the weight of the lever we are only considering the turning effect due to this force F and uh, W here now uh, based on this situation we can see that this force F will produce a counter clockwise whereby this weight W will produce a clockwise we know that it is in equilibrium uh, therefore it should satisfy uh, the principle of moment uh, that gives us resultant moment equal to zero uh, now you can see that uh, this force here <coughs> would produce the distance here is L minus A mm -hmm. so the counterclockwise moment given by this section must be the same as a clockwise moment given by WA and then if you rearrange that, we notice that the force applied here must be given by this uh, relationship. Okay. Now bear in mind, I need to stress out again, we are making assumptions that the weight of the lever is can be uh, neglected. That's how we end up here. Right? Okay, let me clean this up. I'm going to move down further. So type 2 lever, we can also have a second type of lever uh, that work in such a way where the fulcrum is being placed at the end, uh, you have a, a lot here <coughs> and then the force applied is given by F here. By going through the same principle of moment, the resultant moment must be equal to zero. Now we found that this is the equations that we have. <coughs> okay. Now, the advantage of using lever type 2 is here. Uh, because the value for A here, you can see the distance A is much more smaller than L. And therefore, the force that you need to apply is much more smaller than the lot that you are trying to lift up in this case. So, this is a very good. Uh, physics strategy and mathematical strategy to actually lift uh, a very heavy weight in this case. <clears throat> All right. okay now that's uh, for the principle of lever based on uh, principle of moment the following example now this example describes the single force equivalence to P and Q in each of these uh, cases. 
in case number one, we have a force P in Q, which is acting on this object along uh, the line that passes through the pivot at O. Right? Now the force P is um, located at a perpendicular distance of A, whereby force Q is located at a perpendicular distance of A plus B. Just to recap, uh, a system in equilibrium must satisfy two conditions. The first one being the resultant force in any direction must be equal to zero. The second condition states that the resultant moment about any pivot must be equal to zero. Right now, let's try to apply that. Uh, the only, <coughs> the only uh, situation that we are not sure of is whether this particular system is in equilibrium. So let's try not to make assumption it is in equilibrium. Uh, we just try to find out its resultant force. So let's start with number one, resultant force. Right now the resultant force in this case is given by P plus Q for case number one. Right. Now, secondly, the resultant moment, we are trying to determine its resultant moment. Whenever we talk about moment, it must be resultant moment about a certain reference pivot, maybe a physical pivot or it could be a mathematical pivot, about a pivot O here, in our case. <clears throat> so, because uh, this force will, uh, will produce a turning effect counterclockwise, whereby the force Q would also produce a um, counterclockwise turning effect. Therefore, the resultant moment about pivot O due to these two forces is given as PA, that is the moment due to the force P. And then we have Q, that is the moment due to force Q, because the distance, perpendicular distance of Q from the pivot is A plus B here. So that is the uh, conditions that we have currently. Now we need to uh, describe in each of these cases uh, its magnitude. Describe a single force equivalence to P and Q uh, with its magnitude and then line of action. So what it means is <clears throat> if we are going to uh, ensure that this system is in equilibrium, uh, we must apply a single force. A single force, take for instance, uh, that single force can be uh, located somewhere here. Uh, let's call that a single force F and then that single force F will be located uh, at a perpendicular distance X from the single force F. Now that's our assumptions of the single force F that uh, that has a potential to um, to make this system to reach an equilibrium condition. <clears throat> so let's apply the principle of moment in this case uh, by making assumptions that system is in equilibrium. So system in equilibrium. Therefore, since it is in equilibrium, uh, the moment clockwise and the moment counterclockwise must be the same. Now the moment clockwise is caused by the force F here. Uh, that will be given by F X in this case, because X is its perpendicular distance from the force to the pivot. And then this uh, clockwise moment must be balanced up by counterclockwise moment, which is given by the previous calculations that we have here. That will be equal to PA. Q A plus B. 
<coughs> and then we know that the resultant force, uh, the resultant force is given by P plus Q. Uh, therefore, in order to balance up, in order to balance up uh, the upward force and the downward force, uh, therefore uh, F must be or the single force must be equal to F itself. So we can replace the F with P plus Q. And then finally, we can write down the line of action. So how far is the single force need to be uh, positioned so that the system will be in equilibrium? Uh, that will be given as this divided by P plus Q. <coughs> so this X will give us a position of the uh, line of action in this case and then the single magnitude of the force is given by uh, F which is indicated as the total of uh, upward forces P plus K okay now that is the end for case uh, one now let's continue on with case number two uh, case two and, uh, case two um, not much different. The only thing changed here is uh, the direction of the force for Q is acting downward now. Now we're going to repeat the same procedure. The first one being the resultant, uh, let's calculate the resultant uh, force. So the resultant force in this case uh, would be given as P minus Q then. Right. So we are making assumptions that Forces uh, going upward is positive, forces going downward is negative. So the sum of these two forces will give us the resultant force. Now number two, we're going to calculate the resultant moment. Right, now resultant moment. Again, you need to remind yourself resultant moment about the pivot about O. Let me make it short here. And then this would be given as, uh, now this time, P would produce a turning effect uh, counterclockwise, whereas uh, Q would produce a turning effect clockwise. So since the direction is different, uh, therefore uh, we need to take into account the positive and negative sign for these two uh, moments. Right? So in this case we have PA because uh, Q is turning the other side, so we have uh, minus Q A plus B here. Right now, that will be our resultant moment about O here. Okay, and then uh, now its magnitude, the single force where we can um, exert onto the system so that it is in equilibrium. Again, in this case, uh, you can make assumptions assuming that that single force is acting uh, almost the same positions like before. We will also label this, uh, in this case we will label it as Y though. Don't want to make it uh, the same. Uh, this one I will label it as F2 then, just to make a different F2. <coughs> uh, therefore, in this case we can say that the resultant force uh, given by uh, F2, the single resultant force F2 is given by P minus Q. And then by using a uh, principle of moment, assuming that system is in equilibrium, so system is in equilibrium, uh, therefore we can conclude that moment clockwise must be the same as moment counterclockwise. So in this case, we have um, a Y in this case. And then uh, that must be the same as uh, because the direction, if you draw your uh, force F2 in such a way, uh, then we will write as uh, negative. Though. In this case, the moment due to this force is negative. 
and then uh, that will be the same as the resultant moment that we have obtained here which is PA minus QA plus B here so the resultant moment due to that single force must be the same as the uh, resultant moment caused by both the force P and Q so from here uh, we can finalize that as now we can change the sign no? uh, in this case uh, let me let me put it as negative first uh, F2 okay F2 is given by P minus Q so I can write down that as P minus Q and then finally we can actually uh, include the sign here so that will be Q a plus B minus P A divided by P minus Q right. so this is the position um, line of uh, action this is the position of where the force that we are supposed to place and then uh, the single force F2 is given by the resulting force of P and Q now that's how we apply principle of moment to a system that is assumed to be in equilibrium.